are small enough to fit in the palm of your hand. Yet just one of them can support up to 40,000 pounds. They're used for really big jobs, like holding together the steel girders inside buildings and bridges. Pretty remarkable when you consider they're made from nothing more than a single piece of wire. This is the wire they use to make the bolts. It's just a little over three quarters of an inch thick, or about as big around as a quarter. It arrives at the factory in coils. The screeching sound you hear is the noise the wire makes as it's pulled through machines that uncoil and straighten it so it can be cut and hammered into individual bolts. The wire looks white because it's coated in a powdered lubricant to cut down on friction as it's pulled through the straightening machines. But the wire is actually made of a mix or alloy of cold hard steel and carbon. After it's made into bolts, this type of steel alloy can be heat treated to make the steel ultra strong. Right now the steel is still soft enough to be shaped into bolts. But first, the wire has to be pulled perfectly straight. Because if there's even a little kink in the steel, it could turn into a weakness in the bolts. To iron out the kinks, the wire is tugged through a set of rollers to roll out the bigger bends and waves. A second machine yanks the wire through a tiny hole or die that's slightly smaller in diameter than the wire. The force of squeezing through the narrow die makes the wire straight and smooth. The tight squeeze also wears away the lubricant and reduces the diameter of the wire to exactly three quarters of an inch. Or just the right size for bolts used to connect the steel girders inside of buildings. Now that the wire is perfectly straight, it can finally feed into a cold forging machine to be cut to length and hammered into bolts. It's called a cold forging machine because the steel isn't heated to soften it up before it's hammered in shape. Instead, the steel is cold forged or forged at room temperature. They work the steel cold because the 75 tons of force needed to hammer it into shape actually tightens up the molecules in the steel to strengthen the bolts. The machine works so fast, it pounds out 20,000 volts a day. We ask them to slow it down so you can see the bolts taking shape. The first die slams the blanks with 20 tons of force to compress the steel into a slightly thicker top. The next die hits the top with 75 tons of force to flatten the head. The last die trims the round sides of the head to form a six-sided shape known as a hex. Without the flat sides of the hex, you couldn't grip and turn the bolt. Now all that's needed are the threads or grooves along the shaft the nut screws onto to secure the bolt. To cut the threads, the bolts drop one at a time between two grooved plates inside a threading machine. The plates work kind of like a heavyweight pasta maker, rolling and pressing the bolts with 50 tons of force into the grooves in the plates to form the threads. The bolts fall out of the thread are fully formed and ready to be heat treated to rearrange the molecules in the steel to make it even stronger. It takes two furnaces to heat treat the steel. The first one is heated to a blazing 1,650 degrees Fahrenheit, which is just hot enough to rearrange the molecules in the steel without melting the bolts. A quick pass through a second furnace at 1,050 degrees solidifies the steel even more. Once they cool, the bolts are put to the test. To pass, they have to be able to hold at least 40,000 pounds before popping apart. This one, 47,000 pounds. That's one strong bolt. 